All right, everyone. Uh, welcome this morning. I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating today's information session about the reopening of our secondary schools. Please note that at the end of the session, we'll respond to your questions you post in the Q&A form. Uh, so we encourage you to send those questions here throughout the presentation. I'd also like to remind our speakers this morning to speak a little slowly uh, as today's session is being translated simultaneously. Uh, this information session is also being recorded and will be made available on the district website in both English and Spanish. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Crosswaite, who'd like to say a few words. Dr. Crosswaite. Thank you, Mr. Corner. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's informational session. I'd like to take this time on behalf of our school board to welcome each of you and to thank you for joining us to learn more about our reopening plans. I know that there are a lot of questions and we will do our best to answer as many questions as we can today, but we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct questions to us. Today, we'll provide you with a summary of our reopening plans for our secondary schools. And we will have a question and answer session at the end of this meeting. I want to assure you that in Linwood Unified, the health and safety of our students, teachers, staff, and community is our top priority. And that it is at the forefront of every decision that we make. And now I wanna turn it over to Dr. Maribel Martinez, our Director of Student Services, Dr. Martinez. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. First, we're going to highlight the health and safety protocols we've implemented in our schools, beginning in the classrooms. First and foremost, our reopening plans are aligned with the health standards set by the California Department of Public Health, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. In the classroom, these health standards include keeping desks six feet apart, using hand sanitizer, and personal protective equipment in every classroom. Students will remain in stable cohort groups, and students will not be allowed to share supplies or materials. We have also specific protocols for restroom use and cleaning. Student restrooms will be sanitized multiple times throughout the school day, including morning, mid-morning, and afternoon. These cleaning sessions will be followed by complete sanitation of the restrooms at the end of the school day. Signs are posted in the bathrooms to ensure students maintain social distancing protocols and the maximum capacity of two students at a time. Here, we have a few other health and safety protocols that will be followed on Linwood Unified campuses. Face masks are to be worn over the nose and mouth at all times when on campus. Schools will provide face masks to students or staff who need a face covering. Our custodial staff will conduct thorough cleaning and disinfecting schedules in all classrooms during the first break lunch break and after school. This will be followed by additional cleaning at the end of the school day. These intensive cleaning schedules are in place to ensure that all high touch common areas are cleaned and disinfected regularly. To ensure proper air ventilation, classroom doors will be open during instruction time and MERV 13 filters are scheduled to be installed in every classroom. The Board of Education has also approved a contract for additional support to expedite the installation of these filters. Our students will follow protocols when entering and leaving campuses to ensure proper management of movement within our schools. Students who are being dropped off will remain in their cars until they are fully screened. When entering the campus, students will enter through designated gates. 
Markers are placed across the campus, including sidewalks to ensure proper social distancing. Hand, hand washing stations or sanitizing stations are placed at both entry points. When leaving the campus, students and parents will need to follow properly marked signs to ensure social distancing and are maintained at all times. Our lunch and snack breaks will also look a little different, allowing our students time outside the classroom while following safety guidelines. All breaks will take place in designated areas with, stu with students adhering to social distancing guidelines. Campus monitors will supervise students, ensuring safety precautions are followed while students relax and unwind outside of the class. Breakfast, lunch, and super snack will be served as a grab and go. At this time, I will pass it over to Ms. Arostegui Manson, our Director of Secondary Education. Dr. Martinez, Dr. I'm actually gonna jump in really quickly. I just wanted to, I know we have a couple uh, new attendees and I wanted to go over the uh, uh, Spanish instructions for, for hearing the presentation, um, if we can do that. Sounds good. Um, Claudia, if you want to go over that, thank you. Sure. Uh, bienvenidos a todos y gracias por acompañarlos. Y si no escucharon las instrucciones para ver la presentación en español, use el enlace publicado en el chat. Para escuchar la presentación en español, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio hacia abajo, hacia el fondo de su pantalla. Thank you so much. And you can also find the Spanish instruction uh, presentation link also in the chat if you wanted to access that as well. Um, I believe at this time we also have a board member joining us. Uh, do we have Dr. Alma Castro with us? She'd like to say a few words. And Mr. Corner, I think we may need to make her a panelist. Uh, okay. She's, yeah, she just responded as if she's muted. And while we're doing that, just a reminder for, to use the Q&A function for any questions. And we will be answering questions as soon as we're done with the presentation but you don't have to wait until the end. So I know that some people are using the chat for questions, but again, please use the Q&A for the questions. And this information is also being recorded and will be made available through our website. So um, at this time, I, I see Dr. Castro, our clerk for the School Board of Education has just logged in and let's see if she's now available to say a few words. Dr. Castro? Sure, good morning. Uh, good morning, Dr. Crossway, and good morning, Linwood Unified School District community families. Again, we welcome you to today's school reopening community forum for middle and high school. Buenos dias, uh, comunidad uh, del Distrito Escolar de Linwood. Bienvenidos nuevamente al foro comunitario de la reapertura de la escuela, de las escuelas. Our schools in Linwood are ready and we're getting um, just really excited about learning of our elementary schools that have um, reopened in the past few weeks. We, we love to see our children smile and we know uh, that our spaces um, and our campuses are following all safety guidelines to ensure your son or daughter are, are safe at our campuses, at our schools. We are very uh, appreciative of all of the work uh, behind the scenes and everything that has to happen to prepare our schools, including our educators who are working so hard to ensure that uh, they're providing the best quality instruction for our students in person. So I just wanna say gracias again. Thank you uh, families for your continued collaboration and for coming into these spaces where you can share your questions, your comments, and um, you know, inviting other uh, friends and neighbors of our Linwood community to attend these spaces of conversation to learn more about what we are doing 
to reopen all of our schools safely. Bienvenidos nuevamente y gracias padres por estar aquí con nosotros, uh, familias por estar aquí con nosotros y colaborar y también invitar a algunos vecinos y compañeros de nuestra comunidad para que aprendan un poquito más sobre el arduo trabajo que estamos haciendo para asegurar que nuestros planteles estén listos y estemos preparados para proveer esa educación de calidad para sus alumnos. Gracias. Um, y estaré aquí con ustedes participando. Thank you so much, Dr. Castro, for joining us today. Uh, I know you're really busy with your job and family as well, so we really appreciate your, your time. And with that, we'll take it over to Ms. Christina Rostegui Manson, our Director of Secondary Schools. Thank you, Dr. Kostick. To further ensure the health and safety of our students and staff, health screenings are going to be required. Staff will take self-evaluations, including temperature checks. There will be two stations for visitor receptions and an established site to locate um, in location to eliminate any crowds. Students will be screened as soon as they enter schools and will be asked to wash their hands before proceeding to their designated areas. To assist our effort in keeping our students safe and healthy, we ask that parents assist with daily checks before bringing students to school. Parents are asked to screen the students for possible COVID-19 symptoms, which include a fever or a new cough. We ask parents to call the school and inform the health technician if their child tests positive for COVID-19 or comes in contact with somebody who had tested positive for COVID-19. Please note the following situation and when to report to your student's school health tech. Here's an overview of our secondary reopening for on-campus learning, which details the instructional model. Students will be selected to return for on-campus learning based on our tier student grouping system, which ensures the highest need students are to return first, followed by our general ed students. The tiered subgroup system brings these students back in the following order. Special Ed, English learners are unhoused and McKinney Bentos, and then our general ed students, beginning with 12th graders and 8th graders. The number of students to return to campus will depend on the capacity at each site. In order to minimize disruptions, students will continue with the same instructional schedules they had since August and will remain with their same teachers. Students will be in stored, sorted into cohorts and logged on to their regular online learning time. They will then have lunch before returning to their cohort. They will receive enrichment and tutoring support through a district partnership. As a reminder, this is a fluid situation. Based on the data we have collected from the community, we will continue to work on additional options to address your students' learning needs. All of our secondary sites will reopen on Monday, May 3rd. Please note that Linwood Middle School students will return for on-campus learning at Hassler Middle School campus. And the Linwood High School students will return for on-campus learning at the Fireball High School campus. Sixth grade students at Cesar Chavez will be welcomed back for more online campus learning as space permits. Here are the results of the survey from secondary families about their instructional preferences for the remainder of the school year. To gather the survey results, parents were personally called by each of our school sites. As you can see, the number of families who preferred the online learning versus in-person instruction varied from site to site. It is close to an even split between the middle school and online for our middle school, where more of our high school families prefer to remain online. All right, thank you, Mr. Rostiki Manson. Also want to thank everybody just for joining us this morning for our presentation. At this time, we're going to transition to our question answering and answer the questions you've submitted to the best of our ability. Uh, before we begin, I just want to remind you, if you have a complex or personal question, you may email those to meeting questions at mylusd, and we'll give you a direct and private response uh, at any time. 
Uh, you're also welcome to continue submitting your questions down at our Q&A function here, as we want to answer as many as we can. So I'll go ahead and move to the first question here. Uh, will kids be on a waiting list to go back to school right away? Is I'll take that. We'll go ahead and take as many students as we possibly can for each of our site campuses. So again, we are starting with a tier system. So if we have a capacity of 140 rooms that we're able to use while still maintaining the social distance of 14 students. We will then do that by a tiered system until um, we reach that max capacity at each site. All right, thank you for that. Uh, we have a few questions in one here. Will we reopen this semester? Will we be in school for summer school? Or will we reopen for the next school year in August and September? You maybe want to revisit some of those dates. Uh, Mr. Rostecki or Dr. Sure. Martinez? We will reopen um, May 3rd for secondary, middle school, and high school. We are doing it in person for summer school this year. And um, if everything goes well and, and numbers stay low and we're, we're in compliance, we're going to hope to open in the fall in person. And, and if I may just add Mr. Corner as well, thank you, Mr. Rostecki, is I want to just remind everyone that we are recommending that people get vaccinated. Linwood High School has partnered with St. John's Well Child and Family Center, and we're offering the vaccines on Mondays and Wednesdays from Fireball High School. We're trying to help community members also uh, get registered for that vaccine. And so we're going to be doing more to support the community with those efforts. Um, right now, the rates for COVID have gone down drastically and they're looking really good. So we went from the purple tier to the red tier to the orange tier. And right now there's talks about the yellow tier, uh, but we still need to make sure that we're wearing our face masks, keeping distancing, and again, encouraging others to get vaccinated as well. Uh, but as Ms. Arosiki Manson for our elementary and middle schools, as well as our high schools, we are offering in-person support for this summer. All right, thank you, Dr. Crossway. Our next question, I noticed that temperature checks are on the list of measures taken, but with fever often not presenting itself in those with COVID or in asymptomatic carriers, how can this be effective? Dr. I can take that one. Sure. Yeah, I, I can take that one. Um, that's why it's really important that we, as family members, before sending our students to school, that we look at other symptoms, we see if there's any irregularities, but also we follow social distancing. When we're in schools, we're wearing masks and we follow the six feet and we use the hand sanitizer. So using those additional measures will help uh, be exposed to someone that might be asymptomatic and not show the signs either of the fever or the cough or, you know, any of, of the other symptoms. So ensuring that we follow social distancing, ensuring that all students are wearing masks and staff, all people that are on campus, and we continue to wash our hands. And we do have hand washing stations at all our campuses. Um, we're going to have hand washing stations, um, hand sanitizers when kids come in. Um, to ensure those extra measures are in place to make sure that all our students are safe for those asymptomatic cases that we know do exist. Um, but if we follow those protocols, we're hopefully um, not be able to contract anything or pass anything along following those safety measures. Thank you for that, Dr. Martinez. Also might be a good time to promote that uh, actually on Thursday, uh, we're going to have uh, Dr. Gilchek from the Department of Public Health uh, will be joining us for a Facebook Live session. So he'll be here to, to answer some of your some of your questions about uh, the safety uh, of students returning to school. So we'll we'll be promoting that uh, later today. Uh, so keep your eye out for that. I'll go to my next question here. Uh, what's going to happen if we want our kids to stay home for school? What do we have to do? You don't have to do anything. Um, just continue as is. We did a survey and for those that choose to continue online learning, that's still gonna be an option. We aren't changing the schedule for um, middle school or high school. So those online can still continue to stay on at the regular schedule time. 
Uh, so thank you for that. Our next question, which students get priority in returning to campus? When should this return be expected to happen? So May 3rd, and we're starting with our special ed students, our English learners, homeless and foster. And then we're going to eighth graders at the middle school, 12th graders at the high school, and then moving to seventh at the middle mm -hmm. school, and if capacity allows us, we'll start with 9th, 10th, and 11th at the high school. All right, thank you. Just wanted to revisit, we, I know we got a quick email question asking us about uh, this session being available, uh, recorded on our website. Um, so yeah, you can find that on our district website at my LUSD this week. Uh, so it'll be the full recording of, of this entire presentation. Uh, for the next question. How many days and hours are the students going to attend physical school? So for secondary, it'll be Monday through Friday, five days a week from eight to three. Thank you. How will children be divided within the classroom? Dr. Martinez, did you wanna? To... I think Christine has been planning that. So I think she would answer it better. So we are creating cohorts of group of 14. Um, if there are special ed students in the room and they have a one-on-one, -on -one, we are counting that as a student. So it's a body in the room it's to be counted. And um, we're gonna be putting them by grade level and by need. All right, thank you for that. Um, how is returning to campus being handled with LMS and LHS? I think that's probably a question concerning our improvements there. So we are making the Hossler campus available for our Linwood Middle. Um, we want to provide the opportunity as well for Linwood Middle to students and families to return to on-campus learning if they choose to. Um, we also will be having summer school on that campus. So we're splitting up the campus to uh, provide rooms for both sites and administrators will be supporting those families at that location. Well, thank you for that. Next question there. Do we get to decide if we want to return to school? The answer to that is, is yes, this is optional uh, for families that, that want and need uh, in-person instruction. Um, will Fireball's ninth grade return this school year? So in looking at the survey results, we had we expected 12th graders to want to return and it's actually been the complete opposite. We have more ninth grade families. So yes, if we have room, we were moving to the ninth grade right after 12th grade students. Unless they fall into a subgroup, which they will have priority over the 12th graders. Thank you. Will teachers return to the classroom as well? Dr. Martinez? Sure. Um, some teachers will return. It has been, it is um, offered as an optional basis. So we have some teachers that will be returning on campus as support as well. And just to add, so we're still in conversations with our teachers and we have fantastic teachers who are doing a great job on a regular basis supporting our students. And the reality is that we also have many of our teachers who are anxious and nervous about returning in person. We have had zero transmissions since March, 2020. Not a single transmission here in our schools, at the district office, school sites. And again, we have been bringing students back in person for various supports since last year. Um, the reality is that right now, our teachers who are coming in, they're the ones who are volunteering because they're hearing from you how important it is for them to have this option. And so I am very, very grateful to those teachers because they're making a huge difference, not only for you, our students, but also for their peers to reassure them that we have the safety measures in place, that we're doing everything that's being recommended for safety for not only for our students, but also for our staff. And, um, you know, for, for ultimately, as you can see from the survey results, a large percentage 
of our high school students want to come back. And we can't wait to be able to welcome them back and get and increase the numbers. So as we're seeing right now from elementary, we started off with smaller numbers and those numbers are increasing every week. So again, we wanna make sure that we're doing everything that we can as an organization. Because when I look back at this as a superintendent, six months from now, a year from now, I wanna know in my heart, did we do everything possible to support the Linwood community? And, and, and yes, it's a lot, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of anxiety, but I know in my heart that this is the right thing to do. And we're not going to compromise on, on safety in order to do this as well. Okay, I think at this time, I'm going to go over our Spanish instructions as well uh, for translation, just to make sure everyone has those. Um, Claudia, if you wouldn't mind giving those instructions. Sure. Para ver la presentación en español, use el enlace publicado en chat. Para escuchar la presentación en español, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio hacia el fondo de su pantalla. Si gusta presentar una pregunta, por favor, use el foro de preguntas y respuestas también localizado al fondo de la pantalla. All right, thank you. Our next question, will you have hybrid instruction? Ms. Oreski. So um, those students that choose to stay online will have online. Those students that wish to come back in person will be back in person. Um, but we aren't going to be doing a hybrid for this semester because we don't want to intermingle the cohorts. We want to keep everybody um, consistent and not be exposing possible exposure to anybody. If I can add also, um, possibly doing a hybrid would have caused a master schedule change. And we were trying to keep the students um, with minimal disruptions to their schedule and their teachers. So we wanted to make sure that they it remained consistent with what they've been doing since August, since there's about 42 days left of school, um, in addition to what Ms. Arostegui said. And on that note, our next question, my daughter is in eighth grade. Will her teacher and schedule remain the same if I choose to have her continue with online instruction? So yes, yes. the same. Whether she comes back or she's at home, it'll be the same teacher, same period, same time. Okay. I would like for my son to attend school in person. I have filled out the interest form, but no one has contacted me. Yes, school sites will be contacting you probably by Thursday, Friday. Um, in regards to a parent meeting, your school site will have a parent meeting with your principal. They'll do campus walks so parents can view the campus and you'll be getting the uh, information in, in regards to what room your child will be attending um, when school starts on the third. So look out for that. All right. Uh, what about seventh graders? So I think there's a question for non eighth or seniors. So we're gonna to try to, um, again, fill the, the special needs um, and subgroups. And then we'll start with eighth grade. If a lot of eighth graders chose not to come back, it's going to be open up for our seventh graders. Uh, again, we are working with a capacity situation because we are merging uh, three schools into the, the two sites. So we're gonna to try to get as many as we can. And um, once we have rooms available after testing, we will open that up. Okay. And we have quite a few questions just about scheduling. So maybe Ms. Orosagi, if we wanted to go over that a bit again. So students will come onto campus. Um, they still will continue with all of their classes on Monday, their three periods on Tuesday and Thursday, and then their other three on Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so they still, it's a Zoom in a room where they get on their regular class schedule. After students will have lunch uh, provided for them on campus, lunch and breakfast is provided on campus for students and they come back and they'll have enrichment activities, tutoring service through our district partnerships. 
until three o'clock and then they get a super snack grab and go on the way out. And that will be provided for you guys as well when you guys have your principal meetings for, uh, for parents on their campus. All right. Uh, what are the consequences if my child does not return or if parents decide they do not want their children back to school because of safety concerns? There's no consequences. There's no consequences. Personal choice. We want to support everybody. All right. Are all teachers required to be vaccinated? Dr. Crossway, did you want to discuss our vaccination efforts? Sure, thank you, Mr. Corner. Yeah, we are not requiring teachers nor any of our staff members to get the vaccine. It's a personal preference right now, but I'll tell you, I am strongly advocating and strongly recommending that everyone who's eligible get the vaccine. I've been vaccinated and I say that publicly and I've helped a lot of people uh, make appointments to get their vaccine. And the question came up earlier in the Q&A of which vaccine are we administering at Fireball High School? It's been primarily the Pfizer, which is the only one that's available for students 16 and up. Uh, we did have the Moderna administered one week, but primarily it's been the Pfizer. So now that it's open to everyone, our teenagers, they're getting that information and they're signing up and registering to get the vaccine. And they're also helping their families now uh, that it's opened up to them also register and make an appointment for the vaccine. Thank you. I have a question about our cleaning protocols. How much time will the class be ready for the next group to be disinfected? Maybe how much time in between? Because we are not um, intermingling and we're staying in the same room, so we're not switching periods, uh, those classrooms will be cleaned daily um, before and after students arrive. And we have special equipment that we've purchased. And so I, I forget what the term is, but staff comes in and, and they put us a, a special spray. It takes a few minutes for it to actually uh, go into effect. And, and be disinfected. So that's one thing. Uh, we have the air purifiers in, in all the classrooms with students. So that's just another way. It's not recommended, it's not required, but just we, we made the investment to also purchase that. And then we have the air filters that are going into the classrooms. And as Dr. Martinez shared earlier in the presentation, our school board contracted with an independent company to help us oversee that. We're in the process of hiring more HVAC technicians for the district so that once that company goes away, we also have the capacity to do those things. But the number one thing, the number one thing is right here. It's wearing a face mask. Wearing the face mask is the most effective way to make sure that we're not transmitting. It's not with your hands. It's not the touching of surfaces. The number one thing is the face mask. And that's why we're not negotiating on that. Right now, that's the most important thing to make sure that we do not spread this. So whether you're at school, you go into public, anywhere where you're outside of your household, you have to wear a face mask. That's the most important thing. All right, our next question, how many students per class and will they be moving to different classes through the day? I see shaking yeah. heads. We have 14 students uh, plus a substitute and a partnership. So that's a total of 16, but 14 students. Again, if it's a special ed class, we count the, um, the aides as a student body, um, counting up the 14, totaling the 14, and they will not be moving rooms. So they stay in the same room. Thank you. With the transition occurring, how will distance learning change? Will the meetings be recorded and streamed as the teacher is doing them? Or will the current system remain where a teacher talks in front of the camera and shows a PowerPoint? 
So the current system will stay in place. They'll still have the same instructional schedule, the same teachers, the same time, the same days. Okay. We have another question about our tiered system, uh, which students are on the top of the tier. You wanna revisit that? Sure. So again, we're starting with our special ed students, our English learners, the McKenny Vento um, homeless and foster. And then we go with our 12th graders at the high school, eighth graders, general ed at middle school, then going down to seventh grade at the middle school after the eighth grade of general ed and ninth grade at the high school, 10th and 11th. Okay. How much time is being allocated for student screenings as they enter school each morning? Dr. Martinez? Sure. Um, there's no time allocated as in five minutes, 10 minutes, just what, just what it takes. Um, if student is, is getting dropped off through a drive through then they'll remain in their vehicle while the health tech goes to screen the student. And if there's a, a reason that a student has a higher temperature, we are allowing a student to go to the cool down tent. That way they have the opportunity to take their temperature again after having some time to cool down. So we're doing all in our power to allow the student to come back while taking the safety measures. Um, if it takes five minutes, if it takes 10 minutes, um, we're investing that time because we do believe it's important for both allowing the student to come back, yet keeping, ensuring that we're doing all the safety protocols. So there's no time allotted as in one minute or five minutes. We're just doing it as whatever is needed for um, students to be allowed on campus while remaining safety protocols that we've put in place. Thank you for that. Uh, are the Monday and Wednesday vaccine clinics available for people who do not drive and don't have insurance or a valid ID? I, I can take that one, Mr. Corner. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, and, and the short answer is yes, it's available to anyone with or without insurance. Um, the clinic does ask for some sort of uh, ID, but it's not necessarily a driver's license or a passport or anything like that. It can be any sort of ID that you might have, um, but definitely um, uh, you can get it without insurance. All right, thank you for that. Uh, for high school, since there's limited space, are the kids going to be chosen to go to in-person or those who choose to go? I'm for online still till next year. Uh, will they have the same teacher? So I guess, I don't know if you got the, the vein of that question. How will kids be selected? So again, uh, it was a parent survey. So we're pulling the responses from the parent survey. We pulled all those parents that said they do want to come back. And then we pulled we, the students based off of the tiered system until we reach capacity. All right, thank you. If there's a student who tests positive for COVID, will the parents and students be made aware of it? I'll take that one. Yes, so every school has a contact tracing team that has been trained on the protocols that must take place if a student tests uh, positive in that cohort. And that's the idea behind students not traveling to different classrooms. They remain in one cohort. And if a student in that cohort tests this positive, then we have protocols where we follow and parents will be notified. So, and part of the contact tracing team does those tasks that they call all parties that have been affected or need to quarantine um, and instructions, thorough instructions are provided uh, to all families um, and directions are given. And we also have the ability to COVID test a family that let's say can COVID test with their own personal provider. Um, the health techs have been trained to offer that resource as well. So uh, parents will absolutely be informed uh, and the protocols will be followed that have been put in place. All right, thank you. Where do we go to register our children for the vaccine administered through the district? Dr. Lucas, if you want to. About that I'll take that too, Mr. Corner. We um, do have the clinic on Mondays and Wednesdays with our partner, St. John's uh, uh, Clinic, and we'll be sending out those links to the community um, every uh, Thursday or Friday afternoon. I just want to put one little word out, though, that 
uh, the demand for the vaccine is very, very high. As you all know, it's now increased eligibility to everyone 16 and you know, years and older. So our clinic, while it's very, very helpful, uh, might not be able to get everyone in right away. So look for those links, but I also encourage you to try your own healthcare organization or go to the state's vaccine website because you can get the vaccine anywhere. Um, but again, look for the links for, for the uh, Linwood community. It might be a little tight for a while, but um, you'll see them soon. All right, thank you, Dr. Lucas. Uh, let's say that I keep my son in remote classes, but later we decide to go to in-person. Will we be allowed to switch? <laughs> Bless you. I'm sorry. I realized oh, okay. the mic was on. Uh, Ms. Rostocki, do you want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. So if a parent selects to uh, do in-person and changes their mind and wants to do online, that's a lot easier to accommodate and we can meet that request. If a parent chose to do online and then later changes their time, their decision in regards to wanting to do in person or on campus, we need to, uh, we will make the accommodations as long as we have the room. All right, thank you. Will only parents whose children are returning to school be able to visit the campus to see how the campus is set up? I would like to visit to determine if I want my child to return in the fall. Yes, so uh, we are going to be having campus parent meetings uh, probably at the end of this week. Uh, your school sites will be reaching out to you or early next week and campus walkthroughs will be available by registration. Uh, registration. You do have to register for this because we are limited to the number of people allowed on campus, uh, but all campuses will be doing this middle school and high school. Will students be required to wear uniforms? We realize because of the pandemic that there has been difficulty and challenges in procuring uniforms for students. Um, as we told the elementary, uh, it is not a punitive thing. Um, please work with your principal at any challenges that you're having, but no, it will not stop your child from attending school. All right, thank you. Let's see here. Can the kids socialize from a distance on their breaks? Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. And our support staff that is there, they've created activities um, that really allow the students to interact while not physically being you know, close together. So they've really planned out these activities. So yes, they can, absolutely. All right, thank you. We wanna uh, just revisit the tiers and schedule one more time. We have a couple questions about that. So we have a capacity of the number of rooms we're using at each of our campuses due to testing uh, in the month of May. So we once we get to that capacity, we're just gonna fill starting with special ed, all the special ed students that want to come back in all grades uh, for the secondary level. Then we're going to go to our English learners, our McKinney Bento students, our foster students, and then we'll start if there's still room available with our 12th graders, then ninth grade, 10th, 11th. For middle school, it'll be special ed, English learners, McKinney Bento, foster, eighth graders, and then our seventh graders. So we will, we will let anybody in as long as we have the room for it. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a question about graduation. Will there be standard graduation ceremonies this year? I'll take this one because I'm so excited. I got it. So right now for outdoor events per the CDC, we are allowed to have in-person graduation with some limitations, but I'm excited to say that right now for our high schools, we will be having graduation. I think our capacity is 33% at this moment. So we will be having graduations in person over a course of a few days because it's going to take us a few days to get through all of our seniors. But that is a resounding yes. I couldn't be more excited. Thank you for letting me take that one. You are welcome. Uh, will COVID tests be required 
weekly or bi-weekly for both students and the people who drop off or pick up students? That is a no. COVID tests are not required for students or staff with those categories you mentioned in the question. All right, thank you. I also just wanna remind everybody, we have a, a lot of scheduling questions. Uh, we'll be pro providing this full presentation on our website as well uh, in both English and Spanish this week at mylusd.org. So you can, you can go through it and um, see a lot of the, the scheduling stuff that you, you might wanna ask about. They can also reach out to their campuses as well. And that'll be available at the campuses. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. For students that have been greatly impacted um, in terms of mental health, what support is being offered and how will those specific needs be met? That's a great question. We actually um, have been working hard to ensure that um, we keep the resources available and parents are aware of the resources that exist here in Linwood Unified. And we, I highly encourage you to contact your school. We currently have a health collaborative and we have our partners that are willing to support students um, with mental health support and families for that. It's not just for our students, it's for our families and the systems are in place. The partners are ready to support. We have licensed clinical social workers here at the district office as well. And we're ready to support any families that may need it. So please contact your school sites. The system is ready. The referrals are ready. Um, we're here to support you because we know that there's need. And we've actually spoken to our partners recently and they're ready to accept any families that may need that mental health support. So we do have systems in place to support all our families here in Linwood Unified. Jamal, I wanted to also add on um, in regards to the mental health, we also have a lot of support because a lot of our students are struggling academically as well. So our teachers do have office hours in the afternoon. Uh, please make your, they're, they're available for to serve you and, and students, as well as a paper company that's an online tutoring system system available for students at the secondary level. So um, that's a free tutoring service available as well. So academically, we have the academic support along with the mental and emotional support. So we are here to support you guys in any way you possibly need. Good question here. Um, it's very important to hear from our students. Um, has there been anything available or do we have anything planned that will allow them to provide input? May, may I just, uh, so all of our students, you know, we, we do the surveys and we have another survey going out right now. Mm -hmm. So if you can make sure you fill out the LCAP survey that's going out to all families. Uh, I know teachers have also been having some really good conversations with students about the return to class. And then as a superintendent, Ms. Arosigi Manson actually helps me bring together students so that we can hear directly from them. And our last meeting was, at Rosigi was what, six weeks ago or something, eight weeks ago. So less than two months ago, we actually met with a group of students and we heard directly from them. So again, just like families have a lot of questions, students also have a lot of questions and they have a lot of good recommendations. And we're hearing from students who, who know many of their friends and peers who are struggling with the mental health, you know, and haven't seen anyone else outside of their household for a long time. And they're struggling with things like depression and they need to get back in school. They need to be back in the sports. They need to be doing things active. And then we also have students who tell us they've lost, you know, family members. They know uh, COVID has affected them personally and they wanna be able to continue with the distance learning. Um, and so that's why it's important for us to also hear from you and have these information sessions. And, and I'll tell you that as a school district, we're already having meetings in person with our principals. Our school board meeting in January started coming back to hold meetings in person. Does that mean that we're following the safety protocols? Yes, we are still following all the safety protocols and these things will continue changing. If you asked us while we were in the purple tier about COVID testing, it was a different response back then, but we're now in a very different situation. 
and the rates in LA County have never really been this low since this pandemic started. And that's because people, again, are practice, practicing the safe measures. They understand how serious COVID pandemic is, but they're also getting vaccinated. So again, encourage your families, your, your neighbors to get the vaccine. You don't need to be a citizen, a resident. You don't need insurance. If anyone tells you different, give us a call because the vaccine is available to anyone who just meets the age requirements, which is 16 and up for the Pfizer and for the Johnson and Johnson and Moderna, it's 18 and up. Mm -hmm. And again, we know that it's being tested right now for ages six months through 12 years of age, but that information is still going through that process to make sure that it's safe for, for other a groups as well. So again, please, please get accurate information and, and we're here to support you and give you the options that your children need. But listening and hearing the student voice is always critical and paramount because as adults, we're making the decisions, but we have to listen to voices of the kids. That's why we're all here. And I know they are struggling. They wanna come back to school. They need to come back to school. I have two teenagers. It's not good for them to be home all day for so many reasons. We need to get them out and, and, and for them to continue being safe. Well, I also wanted to add on to Dr. Crosswick. We um, also did a senior survey in regards to getting responses back for our students, student voice, and how they wanted to do senior activities this year and graduation, how they wanted that to look like. Um, we're doing a social emotional check-in with them as well. And then our school sites do like principal posses where they meet monthly with students just to get input from the students in regards to uh, certain school site issues. <laughs> All right, thank you. And Mr. Rostegi, if you wouldn't mind just one more time going over the grades that are returning, uh, as well as the length of the school day, time it starts and ends. Yeah, so it'll be Monday through Friday from 8 to 3. We're starting with all grade special ed first, English learners, our McKinney-Vento, our Foster, and then we're starting, if there's room available, with our 12th graders, 9th graders, 10th graders, 11th graders. For middle school, it'll start with the general ed after the subgroups eighth grade and then seventh grade. All right, thank you. Let's see. Uh, a lot more questions about our waiting list, um, whether there is one. And how right they now, right, as of right now, according to the survey, there is, um, we're able to fulfill Every school site, with the exception of uh, Lidwood High School, uh, the students and families that wanted to return. Thank you for that. Uh, a lot more vaccine questions as well. Um, how about they? How they go about signing up? Uh, will there be link and phone number to schedule appointments for Fireball? Uh, Dr. Lucas, it might might bear going over just one more time. Sure, absolutely, no problem. Um, we will send information out to the community from links, uh, so web links to set up an appointment, um, as well as a phone number uh, for our clinic at Fireball. Again, I, I uh, encourage you all to also take a look at myturn.ca.gov, uh, where you can get other appointments outside of Fireball as well. But look for that in your communications from your schools for our links at Fireball High School. All right, thank you for that. Um, also, just want to remind everybody we, um, as we have a ton of questions and we're kind of nearing uh, 11, uh, when we'll be wrapping up, you can also email all your questions uh, to meeting questions at mylusd.org and we'll get back to you for a private or direct response. And uh, of course, this entire recording will also be on our website uh, at mylusd.org. So let's see. Wrap up with a couple questions here. Um, question about sports. Um, if they'll res if they'll resume, and I know they already have. Um, we have uh, we have Mr. Fromm on. Mr. Fromm, is you want to discuss a little bit about our our sports program? Yeah, we currently have sports going on. Um, we're starting with our indoor sports now. So uh, volleyball is going on. 
basketball is. I believe softball and baseball are currently going as well. Um, so sports are back and going. Awesome, thank you. Uh, if a teacher is not present, who will be monitoring or assisting the students in class? So in the class, we'll have substitute teachers and district partnerships. So at the middle school level, we are going to be working with Think Together, which is um, the same partnership we use for our after school program when we were in person. And at the high school level, we're going to be using EdCare and the movement. Thank you. Will students that are returning do an update on emergency phone records and address before students return back to school for accurate data on files? Yes, that's a that's actually a great question. Um, thank you for whoever asked it. Um, parents will be receiving a packet prior to the students enrolling with updated information, and that will be one of the requirements in there to ensure that in case a parent needs to be contacted, proper communication uh, numbers are updated. So yes, so parents will be receiving a packet prior to students um, returning. Okay. What will happen with students who have credit recovery? And we also have a lot of summer school questions as well. We wanna revisit that. Sure, so credit recovery is uh, up and going and we're live for that. Summer school will be available as well for credit recovery this summer. Um, it is going to be a six week session. We're starting with uh, June 21st all the way until July 30th. So it'll be uh, two, three week sessions for the high school students and for the middle school students, it will be a six week program. Um, they will be focusing on the review standards of the grade they're leaving in ELA and in math using um, the SWAN math curriculum. And then we're going to be doing enrichment, which includes VAPA, social emotional learning, physical activity, STEM through mm -hmm. Lego education, and um, community projects, esports through our partnerships in the summertime. All right, thank you. Is there going to be transportation available for special ed programs? Um, if your student currently has transportation, in their individualized learning plan, yes. Thank you. And Dr. Dinkins, mm -hmm. uh, while we have you, uh, what about our eighth graders graduating? Will there be a ceremony? So every school will have a ceremony. Um, based on the certain restrictions that we have right now, we're still planning on how um, to get the others done because at this time they must all be done outside. And so the fields are, at capacity at this moment with high school, but we are diligently working to work something out for both middle school and elementary. All right, thank you. Let's see here. We have just questions about capacity, um, you know, whether our schools will be crowded, uh, our sites with our staff and students. So we have about 140 coming back from Linwood High School and 140 for Fireball High School on one campus. So campuses will not be crowded at all. So um, we painted one way directional signs at all our campuses to make sure that there's social distancing maintained at all times. However, I in talking to districts that have opened up, there really is no need for that because the campus is so limited on the number of students on campus. All right, thank you. Um, during the pandemic, my daughter's grades fell. How will this year's grades during the pandemic affect her for next year? I start off. So we strongly um, encourage those summer school is optional for most students. Um, we have a couple of resources that are available to students. First things first, always reach out to the teacher and the principal. We have several teachers who are conducting one-on-one -on -one sessions during their office hours to help students with their grades. 
We also have paper.com for our ninth through 12th grade students, which is a 24 hour, seven day a week tutoring service to help and promote students um, catch up with school. And although summer school is typically optional for uh, kinder through eighth grade, we strongly encourage all of our students to attend summer school this summer. All right, thank you for that. And we are right at about 11 o'clock here. So I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. But just a couple quick reminders. Um, if we didn't answer your question, um, you are more than welcome to email those questions to meeting questions at mylusd.org uh, for a response. And we'll also be putting a recording of this presentation um, on our website uh, for you to review. Um, Dr. Crossway, would you like to close this out? Yes, sir. So I just want to say thank you again to all of you for joining us for about an hour this morning. I uh, really appreciate your willingness to join us and, and collaborate with us. Again, ultimately, what we want to emphasize is that as a school district, we want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to support your child and give you options. You know, it breaks my heart to hear that for some of our students, their grades were affected during this pandemic. It breaks my heart because I know it was beyond them. It was technology. It was, you know, internet connectivity. It was mental health issues. And I hope that you've already had a conversation with your teacher and with your school principal. And, and I hope that we, there's still an option for us to revisit that grade because again, it just, it, it pains me. And that's another reason why we want to be able to provide the in-person learning because there's nothing like being next to your friends, your classmates, and having a teacher in front of you who can support you and ask, ask answer your questions. Because on Zoom, just like you have here, people are not going to get all their questions answered. They're not even going to ask the questions. And so we know that there's a lot of challenges out there. I'm very proud of our team here for preparing for this presentation. And again, we're going to continue doing everything that we can to support your child and you as, as a member of the community. And I know that for some of you, for different reasons, you had to leave Linwood because you didn't have childcare. I know for some of you, your children are maybe staying with a grandparent or another family member because you have to go to work. And I just want to make sure that you know, regardless of where your children at, we want them to stay in Linwood. If you had to physically move because you lost your house with rent or whatever it might have been, your children can stay in Linwood Unified. Dr. Martinez, who's on here, I don't know if you can put your uh, email on there as well, but she's our director of student services. She oversees enrollment registration. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly to her. But again, your school secretaries, your principals, your teachers, we're all here to support you. Anything that we can do, uh, again, we're here for that. And so I also just want to take a moment to acknowledge our, our partner, uh, VMA, uh, who helped us organize this event today. And as always, I want to thank Elizabeth, who talked for an entire hour during this uh, presentation as she was translating for everyone in Spanish. So thank you so much. Uh, appreciate all of you. Reach out to your schools, make your appointments so you can visit and see what our schools look like now. Thank you so much, everyone. Be safe, get vaccinated. Take care. <laughs>